Earth's surface is 29% land, 71% water. While humans have colonized much of the land, the oceans remain non-colonized. Despite this, man's presence on the ocean has been felt, with ocean temperatures having risen by 0.1 degrees Celsius over the last century. While this may not sound like much, scientists are attributing this rise to an increase in more frequent and powerful storms. The Great Barrier Reef also saw the greatest extent of coral destruction in 2016 after a heat wave struck the area. Mankind's impact on the oceans may become more felt as we slowly colonize the oceans, as well with habitats and larger floating vessels. The BP oil spill in 2010 was the worst in recorded history, destroying countless animal lives and 11 humans were also killed in the accident. If we choose to colonize our oceans, it must be done so as an environmentally friendly endeavor. Farming these seas, also known as aquaculture, is a big part of this process. This process involves artificially growing fish in captivity. Current methods of aquaculture are not as eco-friendly as what they could be, with the fish being oversupplied with antibiotics and the feed coming from wild sources. There is currently work underway to find an artificial source of food for these aquaculture fish, so the levels of wild fish can begin to rise, as more of the fish market steers towards aquaculture. So the farming of the seas may be a potentially useful way to conserve natural fish sources and to begin the restoration of our oceans. But can we live in the ocean and colonize it as well? As of 2017, only three scientific underwater laboratories exist worldwide, and these three labs are small-scale projects. One of these is the underwater habitat Aquarius, established in 1986 and located 19 meters underwater. Even at shallow depths such as these, it is considered an alien enough environment for NASA astronauts to simulate space conditions in the habitat. Deeper still, the furthest point underwater is the Challenger Deep at 10,900 meters deep. To get a sense of just how deep this is, Mount Everest pointed upside down would not even reach the bottom of this ocean floor. Still, humans have explored its depths, the most recent being James Cameron in the vessel Deep Sea Challenger. Down at the bottom for three hours, it was the first time humans had explored the bottom of the ocean for a significant amount of time. Despite this exploration, no deep sea colonies have ever been constructed. The main challenges involve the crushing pressures, lack of breathable atmosphere, and the complete lack of sunlight at depths below the Baffield Zone at one kilometer underwater. So while there are no plans for deep sea settlement, how about colonizing the surface of the ocean? In this regard, several steps have already been taken. Some people live permanently on giant cruise liners sailing the oceans. One of these is called The World, which literally travels around the world and has 165 homes on board. At 197 meters, the residents are permanently stationed on board, with occasional journeys to land for restocking. Another example is the micronation of Sealand. While unrecognized, it is 12 kilometers off the coast of England and is famous for its territorial claim, distributing its own currency, knighthoods, and titles. Creating a permanent floating city at sea is known as seasteading. There have been many proposals for a permanent city at sea, including the Freedom Ship, a massive 1,317 meter ship that would be a true city at sea. It is so large, an airstrip could be placed on top and 50,000 people could be housed within it. Larger proposals still are joint mobile offshore bases, or JMOB for short. They are up to two kilometer airstrips designed to be in areas where no land is available. JMOBs are so large that to build one, it would have to be modular for it to be stable. It would also have to be capable of housing up to 3,000 army personnel. So it appears that the supermassive ships and permanent floating stations appear to be the main candidates for communities at sea within the next 50 years. Looking further into the future, it seems likely that humans will adapt for living underwater. Transhuman endeavors may allow humans to modify themselves to make a single breath last significantly longer. And some humans may even use artificial gills to adapt completely to an underwater lifestyle. But what use is this? If humans choose to colonize the solar system, including Europa, which may have a planetary underground ocean, humans may need to adjust themselves by living in underwater bases and modifying themselves here on Earth before migrating there. This would make underground habitats on Earth part of the transition system for exploration into space. Our oceans are a vital part of our environment and could serve many purposes for humans, including housing, space training, and scientific research. Should we colonize our oceans or should they be left alone? Leave a comment below with your thoughts and thanks for watching.